Greetings! Today we're going to do some do-it-yourself saxophone repairs, some super secret saxophone saves. Things you're going to need. Your saxophone, which may not be in perfect working order. A small, flathead screwdriver, and probably an octopus, or at least a friend. Now, one of the most common problems is, my saxophone won't stop playing high, and it keeps barking up to the high notes, barking up to the high notes. Well, here's what happens. If you look very carefully, when you play high G to A, high G to A, thumb on the octave key, high G to A, this is supposed to happen. When this happens, everything is working fine. However, sometimes this loop is too close in to this peg. This loop is too close to this peg. And when that happens, it's always stuck up. And if it is always stuck up, you're, active, you're activating the uh, octave key all the time. And so you will always be barking up to high notes, which is a massive pain. If that is the case, what you do is you push down here and you push up here and that increases, like this, it increases the amount of space between this peg and this loop, and thus it's not activating all the time. However, sometimes you might do that too much. If you do it too far, you will never play high notes again, because when you go to play, you've made too much of a space. And then you can see, oh, 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 my little peg is not reaching the loop. If you've done it too far, well, then just do the opposite. Push up here. Oops, sorry. Push down here and up here. Here, this way, here, this way. And what you do is you... And then, okay. These two techniques are the exact opposite of one another. You want to achieve the perfect little balance between this loop and this peg. This solves a lot of problems. Mr. Lutz, I can't play high. Mr. Lutz, I can't stop playing high. This little fix, where they're going in or out, solves that problem a lot. Mr. Lutz, I cannot play low notes. Okay. When you play your table keys, I want you to notice that right here, on your, oh, on your G-sharp, here I'm going to play G-sharp. See my little G-sharp key going up and down. Here's my G-sharp table key. Notice this pinky. At no time does it leave my hands. I'm playing a G-sharp, and this key goes up and down. But when I've got the rest of the horn down, this little bar which has a screw in the end of it, pushes down on that G-sharp key. And so when I play a low table key like B, or B-flat, or C-sharp, those ones don't let that move. Sometimes it moves. Oh, you're going to need three hands. Maybe have a friend help you. Have somebody hold these down. You play the table key. If your G-sharp key is moving. Now I have mine adjusted very nicely so it can play, but if when your F key is down your G sharp is moving just a little bit, you're in trouble. You'll never play low notes on the table ever because every time you play a B or a C sharp or a B flat that little G sharp key goes whoop and when it does it leaks and so instead of playing a beautiful low note Instead it goes, because it's leaking in the middle of the horn. Ah, easily fixed. This is your friend. You take, somebody has to hold down the F key. This is why I say you need three hands, or an octopus. And then you adjust this little screw right here. And you turn it until this G sharp key fits perfectly flat when you're pushing a B flat or a B or a C sharp. When that key no longer does this, when you're playing the low table keys, you are fixed. And once again, you can play low notes with glorious bigness. And it should sound like a truck is coming through the wall and you'll be so happy. There you have it. Three easy repairs. One, Two, three easy repairs that you can make on your horn that's going to make a world of difference when you go to play. Good luck.